that easy. <clears throat> Full transparency, this week I have not been reading my Bible as I should, which is annoying, and it annoys the crap out of me. Am I allowed to say that? Am I used to allowed to say talking about the Bible and then say crap at the same time? It's your channel. Anyway, um, so I had to come up with stuff. I was reading my, um, so usually what gives me inspiration is reading the uh, women's Bible study thing that I'm doing. Last time I said we were doing, and you're like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and it talks about the this this week that I'm currently on is talking about um, simplicity, simplifying your life. Right. Um. So that's why it's using this verse. Uh, th- these are more descriptive <clears throat> of maybe Jesus showing the simplicity of of not having a cluttered life, or not not necessarily cluttered life, but like. Focusing on Jesus, right? So here we go. Um, five verses, five, uh, Matthew ten verses five through ten. It says, "These twelve, these twelve, Jesus sent out, instructing them: Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, mm. but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, and cast out demons." You received without pay, give without pay. Acquire no gold, nor silver, nor copper for your belts. No bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor a staff. For the laborer deserves his food. So towards the end, he's like saying, you don't need to get paid. You don't, you, all you need is one tunic. Like, right? Like the minimalism. Not, not in that sense, right? Not in the cultural... Um, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, trendy way, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. It's more like take what you need and tr- like trust that I'm gonna provide for mm-hmm. for these strips, right? He's sending them out two by two, and he's he's giving them things to do: heal, proclaim, proclaim the um, the house of uh, proclaim who I am, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, that's all, that's all we need mm-hmm. is salvation. All we need is Him. You know, like reliance on him and we don't need to be so reliant on things because I do feel like we get caught up in, in things and activities, even church activities every day. Um, we're busy with, with some activity after work or, or whatever. Um, and I think it's a good, uh, thing, a uh, good, uh, words are be are coming hard for me, you know? <laughs> But, like, it's a good uh, mindset to have. Sure. Yeah, it's interesting because in that passage in particular, the reason why he's talking about those specific things is not just for minimalism or or to have, like, reliance on God, but it's also to show how they are to be holy amongst the people. So, for example, like, there's this group called the Cynic Philosophers, right? Um, and so they, they travel around. It's very similar. They don't have very much that they take with them, very minimal. But... Within that, they they do take certain things. One of the things that they do take is like two two um, uh, tunics, right? Mm-hmm. And so the whole idea there is like, don't take two tunics because you're going to have even less than them. You're going to be different than even them, right? And so as they go around to these different places, yes, they're relying on the people. They're relying on God to bring them the correct people. Um, so is he saying don't take two tunics? Correct. Yeah. He's saying don't even take two tunics. Oh. Just take the one. I misread. Right. So... Mm. So he's he's telling them that on purpose in order for them to be different than the, than all of the world, right? Mm-hmm. Even different than these hardcore cynic philosopher people, right? Um, and so, like in this, it, it, I love this this um, this chapter, this verse here because it shows us not only what the disciples did during this time, and there's two different points of this, right? Like this is the sending out of the disciples, but then there's also the sending out the 72, which is very similar, right? So there's two different times a lot of people believe that Jesus sent out this certain group of people, once to the one to the Jews only, this this one, and then one to basically everybody, to the Gentiles and everybody. <laughs> and so we see that a lot in Jesus' ministry when he's he's sending people directly to the Jews, only to the Jews, and then another another time he'll he'll have interaction with the Gentiles, right? So like the feeding of four thousand versus the feeding of five thousand. But in this, I, I do um, like the point that you're trying to make. You're trying to talk about like organization of your life or organization of how you're going about what God is asking you to do, right? Mm-hmm. And so within this, like 
just getting in the mindset of the apostles here, even Judas, right, which is sent out to do all of these things as well. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that really gets me in this verse because it's like Judas was sent out to heal. He was sent out to cast out demons. He was sent out to proclaim the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't often think about Judas in that sense um, where he started in the ministry and where he kind of started uh, with Jesus asking him to do these things, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't give an exception for Judas, which I believe the Bible would have, if that's the case, right? right? It would have been like, oh, and all the all the 11 did these things other than Judas, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, it would have been very clear yeah, about that. Yeah, the verse just before them lists all the disciples in it, and Judas is listed, so. Right, yeah. right, and then it starts off with these 12 went and did this thing, right? Right. Um, and so, yeah, I really love this verse, thinking about it from the apostles' point of view, thinking about the humanity that they had, and how scared they would have been going into this, mm -hmm. right? Uh, knowing that they weren't allowed to bring any of these things, yeah, and and that they were to be obedient in those in in figuring this out. And who knows at this point? Who knows how much they actually knew of Jesus being the Messiah? Like they obviously trusted him that he was, but at some level, it's like even at the end of his life, they still didn't get it. Right. Mm -hmm. So at this point yeah. in their ministry, like, I wonder where they were <laughs> thinking through all that stuff, too, and um, and how they would have gone about going to these different locations and, and talking to these different people and having to rebuke some of these people and the different situations they got into. It's almost like this could have been its own book of acts in a lot of ways, you mm -hmm. know, like I would have loved to see a lot of these um, a lot of these things play out that we don't see. You mm -hmm. know, um, I would have loved to have stories of of Judas doing these things and seeing that, you know, seeing his heart for, for where he was or, or what that even looked like. Right. Sure. Um, and that goes for all of them. Right. Yeah. I would love to love to but hear more stories. Them. Right. I'm not saying that it is. <clears throat> yeah. I'm just saying personally, I would love to, to see that, you know, because it, the reason why is because it resonates with me. Right. Cause it resonates with betrayer? my, huh? You're a betrayer. No, I'm saying all of them oh. It resonates with me in the fact that I'm a follower of Christ. Yeah, right. And I'm in a mission field for Christ. Yes. And so for me, like, I would love to see their experience a little bit more than mm -hmm. we do because it would, it would see, it would make me kind of see them in light of humanity. Like yeah, I have, Yeah, but we right? see Paul and Peter. No, I'm not saying that we don't have and any of that in scripture. Peoples, their peoples. Right. <laughs> I'm not saying that we don't have any of that. Obviously we do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this, this in particular is like one of the, one of the, clearest moments where it's like, I want you to do this, this, and this, mm -hmm. and they go and they do those things, you know, yeah. where other moments it's like, we don't really get that s straight direction, you know? Yeah. So the other thing that I found interesting was the, the lost sheep of Israel. Hmm. Can you explain that further or no? Or is this not what it is? Is Well, I mean, he's just talking about Israel, right? Yeah. Israel has gone away from the ways of God in, right. in terms of like, they are not doing what God wants them to do anymore and they're not seeing the Messiah, right? So like there's all these things that point to the Messiah, but the lost sheep of Israel, they are they are no longer seeing that he is the Messiah, right? Yeah. Basically nobody when he comes to earth knows that he's the Messiah or sees him in that way, even right. though all of these things are, are, are planned out ahead of time. The Elijah that's to come and John the Baptist or Jesus being the way that he is and doing the things that he's doing, they had their own image of what the Messiah was going to be, right? Yeah. Which is why Jesus is sad during the triumphal entry as well. Don't talk about that. It makes me cry every time. <laughs> <clears throat> but, but that's what he's talking about when he's talking about the lost sheep of Israel it is these sheep that, that are not his because they don't believe in him. Right? right. So just like John chapter 10, we see them, we see him talking about the good shepherd. Right. And he says, um, the sheep that walk through this door, right. They, 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 they must come through me. If, if there's a, a person who <clears throat> finds a different way into, into the, the pen, right. The cage, the, <clears throat> the place where the sheep are, um, then he's a thief and a liar. Like he is, he is not welcome here. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he says in that passage, I am the good shepherd. Um, my sheep know my voice. And if they don't know my voice, it's because they don't belong to me. Right. So my question is, does, does when I read it, uh, uh but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel also makes me think of people who, and this could be my, me, I cause I tend to have the tendency of doing that, but, um, it makes me think of, um, people who, who claim to be Christians, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, it's definitely not that there's nobody that claims to be a Christian during the time of Christ. No, no, no. I'm saying how it can apply <laughs> oh, for today. Oh, how it applies to us. Yeah. Well, I don't think it does. I think this is a, I think this is a very historical moment. I don't think it's a teaching moment <laughs> for us to be like, because Jesus never gave me this commandment. Yeah, but I don't fully agree with that. 
Okay. <laughs> like because the Bible was written for us to 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 learn from. Maybe not mm-hmm. like prescriptive. Not everything's prescriptive. It's mm-hmm. just descriptive. But um, but we are to learn from their descriptions, right? Yeah, but I wouldn't say that. I would say that piece of it is definitely a historical piece. It's like I want you to go to the lost sheep of Israel. I think the only thing that we can really apply to our lives in this is the mm-hmm. obedience of Christ that the that the apostles have. Okay. So for us, I would take from this. Okay, I look at the apostles and I see how obedient they were to go and do these things in this specific way that Christ asked them to. Gotcha. In my life, do I obey Christ in the specific way that He asks me to? Mm-hmm. Right, which I see through the, through the commandments, through the Word. And, and I see that in my life, right? And, and mm-hmm. things that he asks me, right? Um, or tells me to do, rather. And so that's, I, I, that's, I'd say, what I can take from this. I don't think the lost sheep of Israel is something that we could, we could take out of that. I think that would be eisegeting, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't fully mean, I didn't fully, what I'm trying to say. I get what you're saying, and you make, well, I agree that you're, I, you're probably 100% right. What I'm saying is, uh, it, it made me think of, uh, the lost sheep of maybe not Israel, but the of the church, mm-hmm. because there's so many people that are lost that go to church, right? Uh, that claim to be Christians, and and that my heart felt for that at the moment yeah. that I read that, but maybe it doesn't apply to that. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say in this in this scripture that it applies to, yeah, it. But, but there are there are plenty of other scriptures, yes, yeah, that apply to that, and it's like, yeah, of course there are there are lost people who believe that they are Christians, Mm -hmm. um, who are walking. I mean, that's what we talk about all the time on our channel, right? Yeah. Like that's the purpose of why we do what we do is because there's a bunch of Christians who believe that they're Christians. They believe that they understand, but they really don't. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so how do we navigate that? How do we battle that? How do we inform people of, of where they're at? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so that they have no excuse so that they do begin to walk with Christ. Right. Yeah. Um, well, they already have no excuse. Right, right. But I'm saying, <clears throat> like it says in the Bible, um, like, essentially those who know that they're sinning um, are worse off than those who don't oh, understand, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, but anyway, so, yeah, I love I love that passage for sure. And, um, a- again, I think I'm just really intrigued by the life of the apostles there mm-hmm. and how all of that played out, like, what impact did that have on the land, you know, mm-hmm. having all of these people, like imagine you hear about these 12 groups of people or these six groups of people, right? Two by two who are going out and like doing all these miraculous things. Like, what do you think to yourself in that time? You know, mm-hmm. as that news begins to slowly spread across the land and, and you hear about these people having a huge impact on these different cities and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, it's just kind of cool. So, yeah. If you want to check out this full episode, you can do that on patreon.com slash the snipe life. This is the best way to help us to support what we're doing here on the Better Not Easy channel. Thank you very much. Just remember that following Jesus is better not easy.